Hello everyone, I'm Akos and you can find me on the official Docker forum which I joined about a year ago and during that time I've learned a lot from other users and moderators and of course from your questions and I also try to help everyone as much as I could. We don't always know the answer but we try to help when we have time. Unfortunately we don't always have time so it is very important that you give us all the details about your issue that you can and are allowed to share so we can start to help you investigate without asking for those details. And of course, the version of your Docker desktop, Docker engine, and the operating system is probably the first that you should share, but this is not always enough to help you. We usually need error messages and configuration files like compost files or Docker files to be able to reproduce that issue. And if you can create a very short example that gives you the same result and maybe the same error message as the original project, then you can get an answer much, much faster. But sometimes you don't have time to wait for us and wait for an answer. So this is why I would like to teach you some tricks that you can use when you want to debug your containers. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will be more confident when you need to fix containers, even without error messages. Of course, if you need help, you can still come to the forum and ask for help. And the community is happy to have you and also learn from you. I have a repository that you can pull and run the same examples as I will talk about in this presentation. And in the readme file, you can also find some links to the documentation and some other websites which you can use to learn about Docker. And I also have some ideas that I felt I should share. And at the end, you can find the documentation of my script that I will use to show you the examples. So let's do that. Now I can uh, run my script, which will start the examples run steps as age all of my images and containers will use the same label fix containers so i can use it to remove everything i have created before and if i press enter i can execute this command and my first example is that i will run an httpd container using the official httpd image without any parameters because i want to test how it works Let's see it. And I also want to see the list of my containers. So I will use this Docker container ls command. And because I want to see all of my containers and not just the running containers, I will use the dash dash all option. And of course, I want to see only the containers I have created for this presentation. I will use the, I will use the filter option. So this is my first container and as you can see the command defined in the container is httpd foreground. Now I want to see the logs even though I don't have any problem with my container but I want to see how it looks like when there is nothing wrong and because sometimes containers can have many lines in the log messages and I don't want to see all of them I want to use this tail option to limit the number of lines on my screen so I will run this and see the logs. You can see some warnings here, but this is completely normal, so don't worry. And uh, I can continue with the next example. Now, I want to learn how I can override the default command. And because I'm learning, I want to make small steps so I can make small mistakes. So that's why I will just copy the original command out and use it in my next example. At least I will try to do that, but I make mistakes. So I press enter and I have an error message. It says executable file not found in path. I need to solve this. And uh, let's pretend I don't know what happened here and go to the next command. So again, I will list my containers and see, see the running containers and also the stubbed or just the created containers. And the first container was running, but the second is not running. It is just created. So let's try to solve this. If you have some problem with your command inside a container, you can just run an interactive shell, for example, run a bash inside that container and uh, try to investigate manually. So I will just run a bash shell here in my HTTPD container 
and copy the command out into my container and use HTTP default ground without the D at the end. And now I realize what my problem was because this error message is much shorter than the previous error message was. Okay, I can type exit and go to the next example. I want to learn more about this HTTP default ground command. So this is why I will use that dash H option to see the help of that command. Let's do that. This is the help and I will find an option that I can use, for example, this log level and I will set the log level. And of course, I have read the documentation of HTTPD, so I know which log level is valid and which is not. And I will use this trace eight to see the trace logs. I have my container again. And again, I list my containers. And now I have three containers and uh, the last container is running. I'm happy again, everything is fine, but I still want to see the logs. It looks like I managed to set the log level. So I have my trace logs here. Okay. But then I want to repeat it maybe next day or, or later. And uh, sometimes I'm tired and uh, again, I make mistakes. So I will just run it and let's see what happens. It looks like my container was created and uh, I list my containers again. And now I can see that uh, this container was exited. Let's see the logs. And I can see the help in my logs. And if you see something like this, it means you either use that dash H option or you use an invalid parameter or an invalid value of a parameter. Okay, I scroll, I scroll up a little bit and uh, I want to compare my command because I know the previous container was working and this container doesn't work. Unfortunately, when I want to compare these commands, I don't see the difference because I can see only the beginning of that command and not the full command. I need a way to see the full command. And now I remember I can use the format option to see the list of my containers in a JSON format. So I will use this option with the go template and uh, let's see the output. I have my JSON output, but uh, unfortunately this is not user friendly. So I want to make it user friendly by using JQ. And this is the nice output. If you don't have JQ and you don't want to install it, you can just use an alternative like the Python module JSON tool with the JSON lines option. Let's see how it, how it looks like. It is very similar, except we don't have colors now. I scroll up to see if I can see a full command. No, I can't see that. So let's see what we can do. Now I finally know the fields inside this list and I can use that in my next Go template. I need the name of my container and I need the status and I also need the command. And let's hope we can see the full command. Of course we can't. So what's now? We have another option, no trunk, and I can use it to see the full command. And now I finally can see. And now I can realize that previously I used a value trace eight, but now I used race eight. And because these commands are very close to each other, I can more easily realize that. So again, let's see the next example, because sometimes you want to run an executable file inside your container and you want to mount it from your host. Of course, Usually it is a better idea to create an image and uh, run, an run a container from that image. 
but now I just want to mount this executable and this is an entry point. In this case, I need to make sure that the permissions of that file is right and I have an attempt to set it. Let's see how it works and I get an error message. It says permission denied, so I need to solve it. I will check the permissions of that file on the host because now, because I have a mounted file, I can see the same permissions on my host. As you can see, there are no access here in the list of permissions. So this is the problem. I need to fix this. I will use another chmod command and uh, let's try if it works. I list my containers and uh, it looks like it works, but it doesn't. I have my entry point in this command column and I can see that the container was exited without any error code. So let's see what is inside the entry point because I want to see HTTPD foreground in it and I can't see in it. It means I just ran an entry point without any command. And if you don't know what an entry point and when, what a command is, just a short explanation. Actually, when you run a container, the actual command which is running inside the container is the entry point and the command as an argument. And when I say command, now I mean the command that you defined in your Docker file or when you run, when you execute the Docker run command, then uh, it is after the name of the image. And uh, the command which you define in the container is the argument of the entry point. So now I want to see that. Let's see the logs. And I can't see anything. So the next useful command is docker container inspect. And I will inspect the definition of my container. Let's see that. I scroll up and I want to find my entry point definition. This is it. I have my entry point and here the cmd which is the command but this is null okay now i have i have an idea so it looks like when i set my entry point i lose my command so i need to confirm it and uh, i will check the definition of my image and in this case i will use the format option and and the go template to get only the cmd from that definition and I will use the Python module to format my output. Okay, so now I can see that the image contains the, the right command, the CMD, and it is HTTPD foreground. But when I inspect my container the same way, I can see it is null. Okay, so it looks like I was right. And the solution is that when I change the entry point, I need to change or redefine the command. And this is how I do it. I have my container and I list my containers again and it works. Okay. So finally, I have another issue which I can solve. Of course, I still want to see the logs and it looks like it works. Okay. So my next example, we use a different entry point. And uh, first, let's see how it can run. I list my containers and uh, I can see that it is running. So I expect to see something in the logs. And when I try to see that, I don't see anything. So what happened? There's another useful command, this is docker top, and I can use it to see my processes running inside my container and not just the command which was defined in my docker file, for example. So I run this and uh, I need to wait because it looks like I have run many, 
many processes inside my container. It really takes time to, to get the output. I have it. It means I probably ran this recursively, so I immediately need to kill my container to, to avoid using all of my resources on my machine. I run docker kill to kill my container and remember this doesn't mean I will remove my container I will just kill it which means I immediately stop it and then I want to see the list of my containers but in this case I want to see the sizes of my containers because even though I, I can't execute any command inside my container because this is not running I can still copy the content out of that container. So let's see the sizes because I want to make sure that this is not something like one terabyte or similar sizes. And uh, it looks like it is small enough so I can safely copy it out. I have enough space. Okay, now I will create a temporary folder and use Docker CP to copy the content out and uh, after that, I will just use the ls command to see the list of the, of the files in that folder. But you can interactively investigate and read the files or do anything that you would like to do. Of course, I don't really need to copy everything out because I know there is an image and a container and the container has its own layer. Everything. Uh, what changed in the container, I can see with this command docker container diff. I run this and I have a list of changed files and uh, also appended files and if I delete something I would see what I deleted. Okay I have an appended file entry point and I have one changed file this is the httpd file and everything above it is just the parent folders. So now I can copy this file out, not everything, just this file. I will again use docker cp and after that I want to read the content of that file. But because this file can be a binary file and I don't want to see binary content on my screen, I can use hex dump to read the first 100 bytes of that content in hex code. Let's do that. And now I have my hex code and because this is not a binary file, this is a text file now, I can recognize that HTTP the foreground is the content. And sometimes I want to browse my files on my container file system even if my container is not running. And in that case, I can use docker inspect to get the path of that folder, which I can see. And uh, I will do that and I will use cd to get into that folder. At least I will try it. And then I want to run find command to list the files in that folder. It doesn't work because I have Docker desktop. I use my Mac and uh, if I have Docker desktop, then I have a virtual machine and everything is running inside that virtual machine. So in that case, I can't access the folders from my host. So now what I can do is I will use a command which helps me to get into the virtual machine and run commands there. And this is the power of the community because years ago, Justin Cormack, the CTO of Docker, created a Docker image which you can use to get into the virtual machine. And then later, Brad Fisher, Docker captain, created a gist on GitHub and explained that image and uh, added some other commands as well. And this is not the end of the story, so stay with me. Now, I can use this to, to run the, the previous command in my virtual machine. 
and I can see a similar output to the previous diff output, except I can't see the letters at the beginning of the lines. Okay. Now I can use hex dump in my in, in the virtual machine of Docker desktop. And let's see the content. Of course, this is the same as I have seen before. Let's see the entry point and find out what went wrong. So it turns out I've wrote the command into that httpd file, but if I just wrote httpd foreground into httpd, then it will just run recursively because httpd foreground will call httpd and then httpd will call again httpd foreground. So httpd foreground will call httpd again. So the solution is ob obviously removing this line or just using another path and not an existing file. So now you can, you can fix your containers, but what if you have a Docker build and you have an error message during the build? Now I will use Docker build command and uh, I will set the progress option to plain because if I have build kit, then uh, I can't see every command I run in this build process. I can only see the current running command and I want to investigate. So I will run this command with progress plane to see everything. Okay, let's build my image. And uh, I have an error message again, no such file or directory. So let's investigate. I want to see the content of my Docker file and this is it. I try to find out what happened and I don't understand. Of course I understand, but again, let's pretend I don't know anything about that. And uh, let's press enter and see my next Docker file. So if I have some problem with my Docker build, I can add a new command here, this ls command, with the, with the run instruction and uh, I need to use it before the failing command in the build process. And the failing command was the CP command. And because I want to run it every time I run the build command, I want to set no cache. So everything will run again and not coming from my cache. I've built my Docker image again, and now I can see the output of that ls command. Okay, so it looks like I've used the right folder, but the content of that folder is wrong. Let's see another solution. So sometimes I don't want to use the previous technique because I want to run multiple commands interactively, and I will do that now. In that case, I can remove everything from my Docker file after the last working, working instruction and uh, run a container from that image. I have finally a working Docker build and I want to run my container and now I want to run an interactive shell. If I press enter, I get my prompt and now I can copy this command out. Of course, you can do anything else if you want to, but now running this ls command is enough for me. Again, I see that my folder is empty, so I will exit this container. Let's see the next Docker file, which is the fixed Docker file. Now I had to use the unlink command after the cp and it will work. I build my image and I run my container. I have my container and I list my containers again and uh, this is it. It works. Of course I want to see the logs and I see that everything is right. Now 
it's time to use Docker Compose because sometimes you use Docker Compose and uh, there are some situations where it is harder to understand what happens with our services. So let's start it and uh, list my services, Docker Compose services using Docker Compose PS. And uh, I can see that my service exited. Again, I want to see the logs, but now I use Docker Compose logs instead of the Docker CLI. I mean, instead of Docker logs. And I can see the help of that command. So I know what happened here because I had this error before. But the solution I can use can be different. So now I want to see the content of my Docker Compose file, which is a YAML file and YAML files has a special syntax. I can use references in my, in my Docker Compose file. These anchors can help me to make my Docker Compose file shorter, but sometimes it is harder to understand. So what I want to do is to see how Docker Compose can see this file. And I will use Docker Compose config to see it. And this is it. And now I can recognize that the command is wrong. Again, I used race eight instead of trace eight. So let's see the fixed Docker Compose file, I will use trace8 instead of race8. I will run it again and see the list of my services. It is running and I want to see the logs again and I finally managed to use Docker Compose and set the log level to trace8. Sometimes you want to edit files in your container. Of course, this is not always a good idea. Usually you want to create a new Docker image and uh, just run a new container. But if you want to do that to investigate something or test something, then you can do that. So I will run a server again, an HTTPD server without any parameters. And uh, I have my container again. Now, because I have Docker, I have Docker desktop, it means Again, everything is running inside the virtual machine and I didn't forward any ports from my host into my container. So I need another client container to access my server port. And I will use this client which has curl inside. And because I've used this option here, network container, and uh, I will use the network of my previous container in this case, I can use localhost, even though I'm in a different container because I use the same network namespace. Okay, now I run enter again and it looks like it works. It says it works. So now I know I have managed to access a website, but I'm not sure if I could access the right website. Okay, so now I want to edit that content to see if if I can edit it and I can change it, then probably I will see a different content when I try to access that port again. So I will run nano in my container. And then I will test if it works by getting the version of nano and it looks like it works. And now I could just run an interactive shell to use nano to edit my files. But sometimes I want to use a GUI to edit my files because I'm more comfortable with Visual, Visual Studio Code, for example, or you can just use an IntelliJ, IntelliJ product to, to browse your files, but uh, IntelliJ cannot edit the files, at least not for now. So Okay, this will be the next example. So let's try Visual Studio Code and edit my files. I need to click on the Docker icon, but because uh, my screen is small, I can't see the Docker icon here, the veil icon. So I, I uh, will click on these dots and uh, find Docker here. I click on that 
I have my containers here and I want to see the number of my example here so I can scroll down and find it and browse this container files for example I will go to go to usr slash local slash apache2 and HD docs and I will edit this index HTML open okay so I could just edit it say hello or something and save it and now I could again access that port and see that output I, I will not do that now believe me it would work because I want to continue with the next example and uh, I will go back to my terminal okay so now I have a very long command which I will run now I have already talked about docker desktop and how you can run commands inside the virtual machine of docker desktop but this command is confusing even for me so let's run it and then I will explain what happens okay so basically I've ran a container inside my virtual machine the virtual machine of docker desktop and in that container I used NS enter to get out of that container into the virtual machine and then inside the virtual machine I've ran the client of container D to exec into the container which runs the docker daemon because the docker daemon in case of docker desktop is running inside a container not a docker container but a container D container and in that container I will run docker container ls to see my containers and this is the output of course it doesn't really make sense but it is useful to understand how a docker desktop works okay so now again I thought about the power of the community and this is the end of the story because when I read Brad Fisher's posts on github I've read the comments and uh, this command which I will use now was in one of the comments so now I finished all of my examples but now I can copy this command out here and I'm inside the virtual machine I can use commands like ls or anything of course I can't use this docker command because there is no docker inside this virtual machine at least not the way you expect it to be so I, I could use the CTR as I used it before like like this okay I don't want to run that command again so I will just type exit and exit from this virtual machine and if I use the other command this slightly longer command which uses a different socket I can uh, I can run it but in this case I will have the console so I need to press another enter and have my docker desktop prompt and I can't type exit and uh, and exit this virtual machine because this is the console and it will log in again okay so this is it this is how you can investigate if you have something wrong with your containers you can now use docker compose to to see the actual yaml file that docker compose sees and you can now get into the virtual machine of course i don't recommend to change anything inside that virtual machine because you can break your entire docker desktop so be careful if i want to close this terminal i can just close the whole terminal window thanks for watching and if you have any question just come to the forum and we can try to help you